show because we're now on YouTube as well as a podcast. Um, we're happy to have you all here. Um, we're happy actually to have today a repeat guest. Um, and this person has become more than a guest. Uh, he's actually become my colleague. So for people that have that know me in real life or follow me on social media or LinkedIn, you will know that I've actually added a new position in addition to my role as host of the Coin Gamma um, platform. I'm, I'm also part of the token tax team. And so, you know, I, the, the, the way that it kind of came across is um, Zach McClure, who's, who's, who's here with us now, is a co-founder of token tax. And um, he was on uh, episode three. And, uh, you know, as the year progressed, uh, I liked what the team was doing. And, you know, it made, made sense for me to join them. And so I've uh, been with the team for almost a quarter now, and it's been an a, a awesome run thus far, and we're looking forward to serving clients in the new year. That being said, don't worry, we're going to keep the, uh, the the good Cohen Gamer content going. Um, but, you know, don't be surprised if you don't, if you see Zach on the, poc- on the podcast as well as the show pretty often, because we want to make sure that we, um, you know, obviously there's a little bit of talking about the book um, since I'm part of the team, but also we want to add value to people that are part of the community. And one thing that we want to circle up and talk about is tax loss harvesting. So obviously this has been a terrible year for most people, unless you've gone short. Um, but for the majority of people that have bought crypto and kind of held it, um, we're in pain. People are hurting, right? Um, but the thing is, there's one benefit to this, right? And the one benefit is that um, you could actually write your losses off on taxes. On taxes. But you cannot do that just by looking at your portfolio, right? You can't just go on Coinbase or Blockfolio, Coin Gamma app, or whatever it is, and look at how much money you've lost uh, versus when you got in. You actually have to transact, right? Because no loss is real unless you transact it out of it, right? Um, and so tax loss harvesting is a strategy under which you can focus on what positions are best to transact out of to help you help minimize your tax liability um, into the next year. Um, before we start, uh, you know, just want to say that this is not official tax advice. This is um, for informational purposes only. Uh, we uh, at Token Dex, we do have uh, accountants that you could uh, speak to, but also use your own accountant and, and kind of double check the advice we're giving. Um, with that being said, Zach, thanks for. Uh, making a, a return to the Coin Gamma podcast, and um, you know, give we like I said, you've been on the podcast already. We don't have to go through your whole background, but if you want to give people a quick 20, 20 30 seconds, and then we can kind of get into what tax loss harvesting is, why it's important, and why is it very important right now. Thanks, Fritz, and yeah, so glad to have you on the team here at Token Tax now. Um, took a while to convince you over the past year, but. <laughs> um, it's, it's been great working with you and planning out the future of, of helping people manage their crypto taxes and crypto, crypto record keeping um, as we as we move beyond just working with individual taxpayers all the way up to exchanges and funds. Um, and just to tell you a little bit about myself, as Fritz mentioned, the 22nd background is studied accounting and finance, tried a bunch of different paths, worked in, in Africa and India for nonprofits, worked in banking consulting, Teach for America, and ultimately landed in crypto and fell in love with the space and just tried to find a way to be useful with my accounting finance skills as a non-computer science background person, um, something that Fritz, I'm sure, can empathize with. And all of a sudden, crypto taxes became wildly important a year and a half ago. And um, so my co-founder and I launched the software platform, Token Tax to be the easiest way for people to file their crypto taxes. You just upload your data, download your forms. It does all the calculating, all the converting to dollars, everything for you. And, you know, gets rid of a lot of the mistakes that people are making. You can actually pay what you owe, but not more than you owe. Um, so, yeah, let's jump into tax loss harvesting. Awesome, awesome. All right, so what, what is tax loss harvesting? What, what does that mean exactly? So, you know, as you mentioned a little bit earlier, if you bought Bitcoin, let's say you bought one Bitcoin in January 2018, 
and you bought it for $10,000. And now you've watched as it drops, 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 drops. Today, it might be worth 4,000. So does that mean you get a $6,000 loss to block taxes? Not if you don't do anything. You have to sell that Bitcoin either for dollars or for another crypto. You have to sell it for something else to do what's called realizing the loss. Otherwise, it's an unrealized loss that doesn't actually benefit you on your taxes. So this is the critical thing that people need to understand. Just because you invested money in crypto and then watched it drop, you, you can actually get some of that money back from the IRS if you sell before the end of the year. And then if you still want to own that Bitcoin or still want to own whatever crypto, you can buy it back. And you know we can talk a little bit about do you have to wait 30 days or not? I mean, if that's a debate, that's a gray area. But at the very least, if you sell, you're locking in that loss and the IRS is going to pick up part of the loss and in a reduction of your taxes this year. Yeah, well, let's talk about buying it back because obviously a lot of people are, you know, if you're still paying attention to crypto markets right now, you're in it for the long term, right? And so last thing you want to do is kind of just, you know, I don't know, maybe you bought Bitcoin at, at 15000 10000 8000 and last thing you want to do is sell it at, you know, 3500 whatever it is right, right now and just walk away. And so what if somebody wanted to um, sell and then get back into it? What... I guess you kind of hinted at it. What 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 is it? Is is that I think there's something called wash rules or something like that, wash sale? Yeah, exactly. So basically for securities, like if I had Google and Tesla stock and Nvidia, whatever, and I sold one of those, let's say I bought it in in January, now it's down, you know, the tech stocks are way down. If I sold that Google stock and locked in a six thousand dollar loss and then immediately bought it back the IRS would disallow that because it's called a wash sale. As in those two sales, the, the sale and the repurchase cancel each other out and it's a wash. So, okay. Now, the debate is whether cryptocurrency counts as a security. And the SEC has come out and said, oh, a couple of these cryptocurrencies were securities when they launched, but they're not now. And basically, long story short, there is no answer. The IRS has no clear, 100% certain answer. The IRS hasn't given any guidance. A lot of accountants say, hey, if it's not classified as a security, technically wash sale rules don't apply. So just sell everything and buy it back immediately. At Token Tax, I think our view is a little bit more um, based on the common sense reality of what it looks like. You know, if you're selling, tax loss harvesting is perfectly legal. You know, wealthy, wealthy individuals, people with private wealth managers, people with accountants managing their affairs, they do this every year in December and November. With their, ta with their stock portfolio and bond portfolio. But if you're selling something and immediately buying it back just for the tax loss, it, it can look like you're only doing it for tax reasons. And, and in my opinion, if the IRS took a really close look, I could see them disallowing that. Now, if you sold your Bitcoin and bought another cryptocurrency, you know, cryptocurrencies are pretty strongly correlated. So if you bought Ethereum, it's probably going to go up similar amount to how much Bitcoin would go up or down you'd still maintain your exposure. So basically, long story short, there is no answer. If you wait 30 days, you know that you're 100% golden. If you sell and buy back immediately, um, it's TBD if, that, if that's allowed. But just remember, you can always sell and buy a correlated asset as long as you don't buy the exact same one. Um, okay. So, you know, and we have data about which crypto are correlated with other crypto. You know, Ethereum, EOS, platforms that are similar will be correlated. Projects done in the same country are often correlated. So we're happy to talk through that offline if you have any particular questions to a specific cryptocurrency or position. Awesome, awesome. So I guess what you're saying is that somebody, last thing people want to do is sell Bitcoin now, and then the last two weeks of the year, maybe they, there's a huge run up to 7,500. And they, they now have to rebuy their, their position at a much higher price. What you're saying is that if somebody buys maybe uh, Ethereum or EOS, or something like that, um, most likely because of the correlation of the, of the cryptos, that will also go up. And so it may not go up in lockstep, but a majority of the upside you will be able to um, still capture. Yeah, it's a lot different than buying dollars. And to your point, the psychology of locking in a loss, I think is scaring a lot of people from, from what amounts to essentially a free lunch. You lock in this loss, even if you don't have gains to use it against, that loss is carried forward with you on your tax return forever until it blocks income either from your regular job or gains on stocks or crypto or anything 
that loss will never go away until it's used up blocking taxes for you. So there's really no reason not to realize the loss if you can, other than the transaction fee, which, you know, is nominal, quarter of a percent or whatever. Got it. So you hinted at, you said high wealth individuals, hedge funds. Is this something that um, people use in the other markets, stock market, real estate, FX? Yeah, exactly. You know, um, my first internship was working at UBS as a private wealth manager back in, back in the day in college. And basically, come November, December, for every client, you just take a look at all the stocks that they had bought in their non-retirement accounts that had dropped. And basically, because they had to sell some other stocks that had gone up, they had realized gains throughout the year. And the idea was, all right, if we have 30,000 in gain, um, that, that our clients gonna have to pay taxes on. Let's look at some stock positions that we don't mind selling at a loss. Maybe we'll buy them back in 30 days in the new year or whatever, maybe not. But either way, take a close look at stocks that have gone down. And so one thing that, that really shows this happening is when almost all of the stocks in a certain category go up and then like one of them goes down. So last year, AMD, the chip maker is a really good example of this. Like almost every chip maker was up a ton and almost every tech stock was up a lot in 2017, but AMD actually went down from its highs. So what you saw in December was AMD just kept plummeting, plummeting, plummeting because everyone was harvesting their losses on AMD. And that's exactly what private wealth managers do. Um, you know, wealthy families that have accountants and lawyers managing their affairs. That's what they do because it pays for itself many times over. If you're getting taxed at 50%. You know, if you harvest ten thousand dollars worth of tax losses, that's five thousand dollars right back in your pocket. Right. You don't have to write a check to the IRS in three months. So really, it's it's incredible how much it pays for itself and how value creating it is. Um, yeah, they should really have a class on this in every high school in, in the country. Honestly, personal finance class about understanding taxes and interest yeah. rates and stuff like this. But, now, as you, as, you, as you talk, I actually remember an example. So Betterment, obviously, is a big robo advisor. And one of, the, one of their main selling points is that they do automated tax loss harvesting within their robo advising strategy. So that's something that they're using as, like, their big marketing push to teach people, like, all right, how, how they're different and how they can actually increase the term. So um, yeah. you know, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's awesome they're doing that. And, you know, I, they charge whatever fee, 1%. And so, you know, it's better to use Betterment than to not do this at all. But even better is to, our motto, you know, for it's like, teach everyone how to fish so that they can do this for themselves without paying a fee to some organization. And they can do this every year because this skill will never go out of style. Like you, you know, asset markets go up and down and you should be investing your savings and getting passive income so that you can free yourself up to do whatever you, it is you love to do every day. Um, and so this is just so critical to understand how you can block taxes or reduce your taxes because it's one of the only the only free lunches out there that you know every year it's painful to write a check to the IRS but um, the, the more you know about it the more powerful you'll be the better ally you'll be of your financial health no 100% 100% awesome awesome okay so I guess is it is tax loss harvesting automatically for everybody or or are there some things that people have to think about whether it's like short-term gains long-term gains where they live are there any other things to kind of focus on? Yeah, I think it's pretty universal that if you can, all things being equal, it's better to realize a loss than to not because it just creates an asset that will eventually be used to shield taxes for you. So, you know, if there were no transaction fees and no 30 day waiting period, there would be literally no reason not to just sell and buy back in because you still own, you know, let's say you own one Bitcoin, as we said, you bought it for 10,000. Now it's at 4,000. You sell that Bitcoin and immediately buy it back if you did that, um, which again, maybe isn't the best move. You still own one Bitcoin and now it has a cost basis of 4,000 and you have a $6,000 loss, but everything else is totally the same. You still own that Bitcoin. So once you start thinking about the fees and whether you want to hold it for 30 days, those are the only reasons not to do it. But pretty much everyone else, I mean, everyone, everyone should definitely think about doing this and consider doing this because it pays for itself many times over, as I said. And even if you already have more losses than you can use this year, they never expire. And if you don't harvest the loss now and Bitcoin prices bounce back in February, it's too late. You can't sell it for when Bitcoin is trading at 15,000 again or something. 
there's no way to ever realize that loss. Now, when you sell it, if you didn't sell it now, you're going to have a $5,000 gain from the original 10,000 you paid. So you really are limited in your window to do this. Maybe crypto will stay low for the next year and you won't miss your opportunity. But, you know, once it goes up, you've lost a chance. It's well, you, kind of like, uh, you know, getting your house re, um, getting your property taxes reduced if your home price drops. You know, it sucks that the value of your home dropped, but hey, at least you can send in a letter to your local property tax assessor and say, hey, I bought it for 500000 now it's worth 400000 And they'll lower your taxes. And, you know, someday when you sell it, hopefully the prices have risen again. But it's just trying to make the best of, uh, of a non-perfect situation and find silver linings where we can. Lucrative silver linings. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So I guess the qu another question is obviously, let's say you've been in crypto and you don't have any losses, to, you have no gains to offset. So like, what's the point, right? Let's say I have I'm all, all of my investments down, I'm in the red, stock market's down, I'm in the red there. Like what, I guess, what can, what, what can somebody do? Is, there, is it still useful to um, use a strategy? Yeah, and again, for three reasons. So one, you know, you can block up to $3,000 of ordinary income. So if you made 50K as a lawyer or whatever, and you lost 5,000 in crypto, unrealized losses. Now, if you realize those, your income for this year, for 2018, will go down to 47,000. It goes down by 3,000. And you pay less in taxes. Whatever your marginal tax rate is, you probably just saved yourself $1,000 or $1,200 if you're in New York, California. And then that other 2,000 of loss, it rolls forward forever. So next year, you make the same 50K and nothing else happens with your investments. You only pay tax on 48K of income. So basically, you're blocking taxes forever um, until that loss is used up. And the third piece is something called trader status. So for those of you who traded a lot or tried to trade intraday, trade swings, like, all right, Bitcoin's going up. I'm going to buy Bitcoin. Bitcoin's going down later. I'm going to sell Bitcoin. You can, you can possibly qualify for trader status, which allows you to basically offset all of your trading losses against ordinary income. Even if you were a lawyer or you drove, drove an Uber or whatever, and you made 50K driving for Uber and you lost 30K trading crypto, well, if you qualify for trader status, now your taxable income is only $20,000. So that's a pretty amazing opportunity for people who might qualify. Um, and it's a bit complicated and a bit subjective of whether or not you qualify. Definitely talk to a tax professional or come talk to us at, at tokentax.co tokentax.us and we can answer whatever questions you have um, now, so as far as like so it's this up to three thousand let's what if, what if i have i have, want to write out thirty thousand in taxes so you're saying that i basically could roll it roll that three thousand for ten years exactly you can roll it for ten years and every year you just take three thousand and three thousand next year until it's finally used up and okay. You know, yeah, and if let's say you take three thousand for the next five years, you still have fifteen thousand left. And that year you have a great a great investment. You buy some stock, it goes up a lot, you sell it, you make a quick fifteen thousand dollar gain. Well you don't owe any taxes on that because you you have a fifteen thousand dollar loss still to use. Awesome, awesome. Which are taxed higher, but now your loss can block it. Right, right. Now to the so you we covered the ordinary income, but let's say there are capital gains in other asset classes, real estate, stocks, bonds, foreign exchange. Can it be used? Like, can that thirty k? Let's say I made thirty k trading tech stocks, and then I lost thirty k in crypto. Does that net out uh, completely? Yeah, yeah, it does. Basically, so you wouldn't owe any taxes, and and you know the really nice thing is if you have short term gains. That you're probably going to be taxed at 50 percent well if you have long-term losses long-term losses this is you know a lot of people that know a lot about taxes don't realize this but long-term losses can actually block short-term gains first you net out short and short short-term gains and short-term losses then long-term gains and long-term losses and then you net long and short if they're different so if you wow. lost money long term and made money short term they combine and can actually cancel each other out on your tax return and so, you know, this question comes up all the time and people are, people are surprised, even lawyers, um, people that business people, finance people there, a lot of people are surprised to learn this. So don't miss this opportunity to block high tax, short-term gains with long-term losses in crypto. 
Awesome. Awesome. Cool. 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 All right. Well, listen, man, I think, you know, you're pretty busy. Um, we're, we're pretty busy serving clients and, and trying to position them to have a successful end of the year, um, which, you know, with a few days left, um, you know, for our listeners, well, for, for people watching, um, obviously you could speak to, you could come to us at token tax as token tax CEO. Um, we actually just introduced a new tool that allows you to um, identify which part of you, which which one of your positions you should um, liquidate um, as part of your strategy. So it's called a tax loss harvesting um, dashboard. Um, so you can come check it out uh, on our website. Um, but you know, obviously, if you have your own tax professional, please uh, speak to them about it. I think you know some of the information that we've already given enables you to kind of uh, enter that conversation um, with a, in more of a position of power. Um, but, uh, you know, obviously we're here to help. Um, so to it's tokentax.co. And for, uh, we, you can use the code coin gamma to get a discount, um, on any of your packages. And that being said, if you sign up now, you, this actually covers you through next, um, tax season, right? So like when you, if you check out the tool now and then you file your taxes in March, you're still covered. You don't have to buy a new, uh, service or anything like that. Our platform could actually still help you. Yeah. Is there anything you want to add, Zach? Yeah, so there's no reason to wait until the tax season actually begins next next month. Thanks for pointing that out. And yeah, the last thing I would add is like, when you look at harvesting your losses, you can't just look at your portfolio and say, oh, I own four Bitcoin and the total unrealized loss is this. What you really need to do is think about it on a tax lot basis and say, oh, well, three of those Bitcoin I bought at really high prices and one I bought at a low price. So I can only sell three of them to reduce my taxes. And if you have that level of, of specification and sophistication to understand that, and you can actually look at the tax lot level, that's all you need. And for people that are confused by that, that's what our tax loss dashboard does for you. It just basically looks at all your crypto positions all the way down to every individual tax lot. So thousands and thousands of transactions and tells you, it sums them up and says, hey, you can sell 50 Ethereum for this much of a loss, but don't touch these other 100 Ethereum because your gain will go up. And we basically give you it in that prescriptive of a way so that you can make your own decision optimized about how much you wanted to, how much unrealized losses you want to actually recognize uh, or realize this year. So always, always happy to take time to give a public service announcement like this and try to save people money or make people money. So thanks for having me on, Chris, and uh, I'll see you in the office. Yeah, for sure. Let's, let's get back to work, man. Well, thanks for your th time out and uh, we'll catch you next time.